My name's Jack. I'm the Key Conservationist. I'm the Youth Ambassador for Orangutan Republic and Orangutan Alliance. I'm here today with Dr. Gary Shapiro, who's done extensive work with orangutans for almost 50 years. He has worked with orangutans teaching them sign language, and he has studied animal intelligence. Come join me for an unforgettable chat with Gary and some footage of orangutans. It's good to be with you. Yes, it's great to speak with you. Could you tell me a little more about yourself and your work with orangutans? You know, it's it's really my passion, and it has been for, for many, many years. Um, but, you know, before I, I went into working with orangutans, I wanted to be a marine biologist like Jacques Cousteau. I found myself actually not going into marine biology, but transferring to a school uh, that had access to the zoo at Fresno, Fresno City Zoo. And I'd gone to the zoo in Fresno and there was this orangutan there, a juvenile. And the zoo was actually encouraging the students from the college to work with the different animals, to study the different animals at the zoo. So I asked the zoo director, Paul Chaffee, if I could, if I could work with Azak, the juvenile Sumatran orangutan, and go into the cage with her and teach her symbolic language. And we'd have a lot of fun playing around and she'd spit water in my face and we would, you know, just have fun. But then I'd get her to sit down and start showing her and associating, having her associate a symbol with like a fruit or like an action. And over time, she was able to figure out the relationship and she could actually read and write with these plastic letters. And I did that for almost two years and it was the basis of my master's thesis. I transferred to Oklahoma University, the University of Oklahoma, and I was able to work with Washoe, the original signing chimp. Generally, you look at animals and their biology or their ecology, but I was looking at their psychology. I was looking at chimpanzee psychology as, as, uh, as they learned sign language. So I went from orangutans teaching them symbolic communication to chimpanzees working with sign language. And while I was working with this one chimpanzee named Ali, I got a call from my professor. He, he asked me, would you like to um, go to Borneo and teach sign language to the orangutans? Well, what would you do, Jack, if somebody asked you that question? Of course. <laughs> of course. I, I, I remember I didn't even have to think about it. It was July 5th, 1977, and I immediately said yes. And at that point, everything changed for me. I had to prepare and get ready to go. And, um, and eventually, a year later, I was in the jungles of Borneo at the invitation of uh, Dr. Barute Galdikas. But she asked me, because Roger had said there's only one person in the world who has worked with sign light, signing chimps and knows about orangutans, and that was me. So I, everything just kind of got into line, alignment. And uh, it, was an, it was an experience that, of course, changed my life forever. And it was one of the reasons why I dedicate my life now to helping to save orangutans. After you went to Borneo, you decided to start Orangutan Republic Foundation. Could you talk about why you decided to start OURF and the mission? Absolutely. I was, um, both Dr. Galdikas and I started the Orangutan Foundation International in 1985, 86, and I was the vice president for 18 years. But one of the things that I recognized was that it was important for me to do something more with my life that focused on the, the underlying causes of why orangutans are being threatened to, to extinction. And the main reason is the lack of education of people in Indonesia who don't understand the animal, doesn't, don't understand the laws, don't appreciate the orangutan. Maybe they feel they're entitled to buy a baby because they have the money. So there was a real important reason to start an organization whose main focus was education. And again, our mission is to save orangutans through education and other innovative projects. 
we wanted to make sure that we had enough breadth in our mission statement that we could do more than just educate in a, in a the classical sense. And we've been very, very fortunate. One of the main things that I really like is collaborating with organizations that I trust. Yeah, and now I will be working with Orangutan Republic and I will serve as your youth ambassador. And I'm so excited yes. for this opportunity to be working with you and Orangutan Republic. Now, before you started um, Orangutan Republic, you worked with Princess the Orangutan. And Princess was the first Orangutan to learn sign language. And during your time working with her, you formed a special bond with her. What was it like to be a father figure for her? Wow, Jack, that's a great, great question. And um, let me just clarify also, Princess was not the first, okay? Actually, there have been there have been orangutans who have learned a little bit of sign language at the zoo, like in, in Oklahoma. She was really, um, she, she was involved in many, many projects that, that I started with her, not just, just sitting around with her and teaching her signs, but she was part of my doctoral project where I looked at four different orangutans and wanted to see how quickly they learned signs and compare them to four chimpanzees that my professor, Roger Fouts, had taught. And I wanted to do a comparative study because in doing science, the more subjects you have, the better your data. And I took her back to the guest house where I stayed at Camp Leakey. And for many, many months, she stayed with me. She slept with me at night uh, we got up in the morning. I let her go out and, and take care of her, you know, her business outside so she would feel better. And then we would sit down on the porch and I would bring some rice and I'd bring some fruit and I would start teaching her sign language there, just like uh, a child. And uh, I kept track of all this. Uh, I wanted to see her progress and how quickly she would learn signs. And I was always, I tried to be with her as much as I could. And, um, she was always clinging on to me or riding on my shoulder. And so for me, it was really, because uh, I had not had a child of my own. She was my first child, I would, I would say, that I formed a very close bond with and had, had for many, many years. You just know so many facts. What are some things that everybody should know about orangutans? When I was out there in 1978 to 1980, we really thought there was only maybe 20,000, 25,000 orangutans left. And we really didn't understand that there were a lot more. There were probably maybe a half a million or maybe 250,000. 1999 to 2015, we lost maybe... Uh, over a hundred thousand orangutans to poaching and to habitat loss and to other things. So people should first know that orangutans are critically endangered and that there are three species of orangutans. Now, apart from that, we all know that orangutans are 97% genetically similar to human beings. Only gorillas, bonobos, and chimpanzees are closer to us. They are very similar in their um, the brain, how the brain is organized. In fact, if you look at the brain, you may find even more asymmetrical uh, structures with the orangutan brain. And so we also like to say orangutans are smart. Yeah, they learn sign language, but they also have what we call a theory of mind. What that means is that they know something about what you're thinking. They can somehow think about what you're thinking about. That's a very interesting idea, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they, they, are, they are funny animals. But you know what? I want people to really see them as majestic animals. They become funny when we put them in our environment and we see how they use human tools or human things. And then we laugh at them because, well, you know, they're just trying to figure it out. Uh, they're so smart and they can be so funny. But uh, they're also so majestic, and we wa I want people to know that. Um, you mentioned how just a couple decades ago, there were t over 250,000 orangutans. But now there's only about 115,000 left in the wild. And some experts say that they could be gone within the next 10 years. 
Yes. How can we help save orangutans? Well, I think that we can all do our part. Every one of us. It just doesn't have to be the Indonesian people who are living uh, on the border of areas where orangutans live, although they are a very important uh, community to help protect orangutans. So I think you would see that because ultimately they are going to become the stewards of the forest. They, they live there. But you and I living here uh, far away from the jungles, we have our part to play too. And I think it's important to realize that one of the threats to orangutans has been the conversion of their rainforest for estate agriculture. When I say estate, large scale agriculture, millions of hectares of forest have been converted to for crops, for things like rubber, um, uh, certainly um, pulp for paper, but most people know about the palm oil. So palm oil has its pluses and its minuses. I think you know that. Yes. Uh, pa palm oil is actually very, very versatile and it's um, very productive. On one hectare of land, you can grow more oil per hectare than any other vegetable crop. So what we want to see happen, even though we've lost a lot of forest, we think that the government of Indonesia and the local people and others can actually do very good with palm oil on the existing areas where they have the palm oil now. We don't want to see further clearing of the land. So it's a very complicated issue, Jack, but it's the most thing that the best thing we can do from this side of the ocean is to be aware of the products that we buy and what's the ingredients that are inside. And if we are to choose a product that's going to be orangutan safe, it would one be, it'd be it would be one that probably didn't have any palm oil in it to start. But if it does have palm oil or some palm oil ingredient, it should be from sustainable sources. So what we ought to try to do is to learn more about the products that we buy and to ask the manufacturers, does this product contain palm oil? And if so, was it sustainable palm oil? from a source that's sustainable. Also, help organizations that are in the field working directly with populations of orangutans, helping to save them, helping to rescue them, and then helping to educate the local people. So by supporting organizations, um, and if you think about it, we it only takes very little money compared to the kind of money we spend in this country on all kinds of different things. And what we'd like to see people get as excited about conserving orangutans and their rainforest as we do about other things that aren't necessarily as important for our survival. And the forests are the lungs of the earth and the lungs of the earth absorb the carbon dioxide that's helping to protect us. You know, so if we save orangutans, we save the biodiversity, we save the forests and we save ourselves. Gary, we have learned so much today. You have told us so much information. And I think I speak for everyone watching this when I say thank you. Is there anything else that you would like to leave us with or tell us before we go? I just would like people to recognize that you know during their busy day, uh, to remember there are, there are so many people and animals that are out there that are not as, as uh, fortunate as they are. And we should, we should spend time thinking about them mindfully, thoughtfully, and what we can do to help them out, whether it's a homeless person or uh, an orangutan somewhere in Borneo. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I think it's important that we also learn that we ourselves have to change internally about what's important. Um, and and that, that is an internal reflection that we all should be doing, our own work. Because we can't, we can't save the world until we save ourselves. And we have to save ourselves by being more thoughtful about our actions and how that impacts the world. And th thank you, Jack, for this opportunity. I, I look at you like I, I consider like Greta, who's one of the ambassadors as well of the world. And the youth are the future. I'm, I'm, I'll be turning 70 years old this year. And I realize that my time 
my 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 shelf life is is not as good as it was when I was in the jungles of Borneo. So I can't do field work like I did. But you know, you and Greta and others are an inspiration and give me hope. So I hope you continue doing what you're doing as as you do it so well, uh, inspiring others to take a look at orangutans and other issues that are important. Mm-hmm.